it's day number 13 so tip number 13 coming up uh, I want to dig a little deeper in this fear and phobia theme that I started yesterday so how come we get a f you know get afraid of something so in order to investigate a little bit more I have drawn a little picture um, you have the conscious mind is up here above the surface and then you've got 95 and yes I'm aware that it's now mirror imaged um, you have 95% of the subconscious going going on down here under the, the water so say for example you're learning to drive a car so you're very aware up here how you're you know you need to change gears you need to indicate you need to look for red lights for pedestrians for you know people on bicycles and so on and so forth there's a huge thing going on there and you're like constantly thinking about everything that is going on around you all of a sudden you've sort of mastered this program so it drops down into your pattern behavior subconscious so all of a sudden you're sitting there driving the car uh, from A to B and you're talking to a friend you're changing channels on the radio you're maybe preoccupied in your mind because you might go to a meeting somewhere and all of a sudden you end up at point B and you're like wow how did I actually get here because I wasn't really paying attention on my driving and that's because now the subconscious is taking care of it the same thing happens for example with scary situations. So say that you are in grade number five, like I was, I'll tell you my story. Grade five, I'm in the fast math group. We are divided into the slow group, the middle and the fast group within three classes. Uh, and the teacher says, before handing out the test result, that someone has been exceptionally stupid this time and moved the comma doing the percentage calculations completely wrong throughout the whole test. She obviously didn't point out who it was, but that test ended up on my desk. Today I'm 41 and I still have almost like a phobia for calculating percentage. I go to Google <laughs> and type in da 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 percent of blah blah blah. Or I just test myself, you know, I'll just put something and if it sounds right, <laughs> I'll use it. But I mean, and that's math. I mean, that I can live with. But what if the fears are deeper? What if it's uh, a different kind of phobia? Like, like public speaking, for example. You might have had a sort of similar scenario going on in school, but you were giving like a speech in school and some kids were laughing at you. So the next time you go up and have a lecture in school, you will have this, you know, fight or flight um, thing going on. Like last time they laughed at me and that was really scary and it triggers the stress response. So now we know that, okay, next time it's going to be a scary situation. Don't do it. And yet to pass the grades, you have to. So you go up and you get just verification because look, they're laughing again. You get more and more nervous, you stutter, you, you, you mess up more and more and more. And all of a sudden you're an adult and there's a job opportunity for you. That will involve a lot of public speaking, maybe to uh, different groups in the company, maybe to external clients and so on and so forth you will then have this instinct that subconscious will tell you stay away from it because public speaking is dangerous you'll be laughed at and that's dangerous because that triggers our fear of exclusion and prehistoric times exclusion was equal to death because if you are not a, a part of the tribe anymore you will not get fed you will not get housed you will not have a tribe to to go hunting with stay safe with because no one is there to look after you during the night uh, so you'll be all by yourself and that's really really scary so it actually triggers the same area of our brain still uh, as a physical 
punch wood. Um, so here's, that's the thing, we train as children to see where, where are the danger, dangerous situations. And today, as adults, these end up like paper tigers. They're not frightening anymore, really. I mean, it's not so much about, you know, life or death anymore, but we still carry the same fears because they're down in the subconscious. We're trained to stay out of certain situations. So, for example, with me and my math, I, for the longest time I had to go to, cli uh, to colleagues and get them to like write me a formula on how to calculate everything step by step. And I've been a reservations manager, I've been in investment banking, I've done all these calculations daily, and yet I wouldn't do it without my little cheat sheet. That's how deep it went from that one time in the classroom back in fifth grade. We're talking 1985, you know. So that's how, how deep it goes. And until you actually start investigating what's what the pattern is about and why it got triggered, you will still run on the subconscious level and like, okay, this is dangerous. I don't know why. It's not serving me anymore, but I'll stay away anyway because my my body or my mind tells me to stay away. So I hope that gives you a bit more insight. Uh, again, if if you have more questions on this, please write them down in the comments and I'll make another video and explain it even more. So have a fantastic day now. Bye.